What's up guys, it's Retro Productions here, and today I'm making another video on the, the Retro Pocket series of devices. I haven't made a video in a while guys, sorry about that. Just been busy doing other stuff, honestly guys. But I thought I might as well make a video. So this is the Retroid Pocket 2S. I haven't really made a video on it. I've done a small videos, but not full proper video. I bought this device, I can't remember how long ago, but it's been probably half a year now. Honestly guys, this device has been really good. It uh, has no writing on the back. But I decided to get the indigo color because my other devices were black and yellow, so I wanted something completely different. So it has clicky L and R buttons, and it has analog triggers, of course. It has a dome switch uh, D pad, quite clicky. R3, R3 functionality, and it has uh, rubber membrane buttons, but they're still quite clicky as well. And they, they are a bit bigger than the 2 plus versions. So they do feel nicer to press, honestly. And you have these two extra buttons. And you have home, and this is supposed to be a back return and a mappable button. You can map it to anything. And there's the SD card slot and the 3.5mm headphone jack. So yeah guys, it still rocks the 3.5mm, uh, the 3.5 inch display. And uh, it has the front, facing, the front facing speaker still, which is good. It feels nice to hold, honestly, guys. You know, you can still, uh, as for me, I can still play it properly, and it doesn't feel crampy. It doesn't. I don't use the grip or anything. So let's turn it on. So, guys, it's still running Android 11. The 2 Plus came with Android 9, but then I eventually upgraded it to Android 11. So this one comes straight outside the box with Android 11. I got no complaints with the build. I'm glad it runs Android, honestly, because Android is very flexible and um, a lot of developers making apps for it and uh, applications and emulators. So, yeah. Honestly, guys, the display is a good quality. It's much better than the 2 Plus display. I've added my own custom wallpaper as well. So, yeah, it's a good display. It's not, I don't have complaints with it. It, uh, so yeah, in terms of build quality guys, I got no complaints with it, really I don't. Now the touch screen is a bit finicky, but it can sometimes be a bit too sensitive, but it's, it hasn't gone messed up yet, hopefully it doesn't mess up. So in terms of the display, as I've mentioned before, it's a 3.5 inch display. Some people wanted it to be 4 inches, honestly, I wouldn't mind it if it was 4 inches, but I guess they stuck they stuck with the three point five inch because that they had more of those in the in the supply chain. It has the bezel which I don't mind. So let's move on, guys. I've uh, got it uh, on performance mode. That's the mode I use, and I also got I uh, do not disturb on because I, if I don't have that, I'm gonna have a lot of. I think it was Google Play services and all these warnings would come up when I booted the device, so I don't get any of that anymore. So in terms of emulators, I got the Dolphin Google Play build running. Now this, it's good for majority of the games. Some games like Super Mario Sunshine, they don't run very well, honestly. I also have uh, Dolphin for handheld, Dolphin MMJR. Now I use this for some games like Super Mario Sunshine, but for some reason it doesn't want to boot up anymore. I also have Dolphin MMJR 2, the latest version that is. If you guys want the APK for this, let me know. I have the latest Netha SX2 build, 1.8. Also have the RetroArch builds, 8 Arch 64 and 32 bit. These are running the 1.17 version. Uh, the 1.18 version is just right, right around the corner, so keep an eye for that. I also have Warpinator, so I can copy my files to uh, the PC or to my Steam Deck and vice versa. I got this off the Google Play Store. Also have Flycast from the, the website. This is the dev build. If I can open it, it's the dev build. I have a couple of games. I also have a retro core as well of it. On the retro 32 bit version, I have a Flycast core. Now, this Flycast recently got some good updates to version 2.3 and they've improved the performance and fixed a lot of bugs, especially in Shemnu. Shem, well, I can't even pronounce the name, guys. Shemnu, is that how you pronounce it? 
Uh, also, I have Citra, two versions of Citra. This one is the the official one. Now, with Citra, of course, recently it's been uh, discontinued, unfortunately, and that sucks. It's a shame. But that's the nature of these apps, unfortunately, emulators. There's always, you never know what's going to happen the next day. And so, yeah, guys, this is the. I'll show you which version this is. This is a. Uh, uh, wait, oh, hold on a second, guys. This is the Canary build 2723. Now, there was a couple more builds after this, and I do have that on this device, the APK, but I'll stick with this build for certain. You know, and the reason is because I can run. Uh, oh, sorry, guys, about that. I just run the Discord. Um, because Super Mario 3D Land actually runs, it boots up on the latest version, it crashes on Vulkan, you have to switch it to OpenGL and then it runs slowly, so yeah. Plus this version has the revamped UI, which looks quite nice. Before it was just all white and it wasn't nice. So 3D Land works on this build, have a couple of games on here. I don't honestly play too much 3DS, but sometimes I, I will play some games. So also have uh, N64. Uh, this build M64 plus FZ Pro from the Google Play it recently got an update a couple of months ago to, uh, uh, I don't really use play N64 that much guys on this device it's nice to have but there's a lot of I focus mainly on the higher end stuff also have PPSSPP the latest beta build I'm signed on as a beta you know tester on the Google Play Store I have Drastic now this is a um, I don't think this is the latest build, it's the 2.5.2.2a build. Now this is a build that was uh, two updates well, before the final version, so it's two updates prior to that one. And the reason why I stuck with this one because it seemed like um, there was a couple of issues with the later builds, like it couldn't open in a launcher and uh, some games were having issues, so I stuck with this build. And also I have main for droid 0.139u1. Now there was another main for Droid, a blue one, on the Google Play Store. Now that's been taken down, unfortunately. But I've been using this build, and also there's been a new later version with the latest Babe Ram set on the Google Play Store. I, I don't really use that because I have no problems with this build. I've just I've configured it. Uh, a bit, you know, I've done some modifications to the controls so that I can use the triggers to do that. And I've mapped, you know, the coins, the select, and, you know, start to those. Uh, connected, you know, back the D-pad controls and everything. I don't really play much game on this, but yeah. Yeah, but since Hero 2, I use the latest Google Play build. Retroid launch, I don't really use it, honestly, guys. I stick with this, this basic Android layout. Solid Explorer is used, you know, to navigate my files, folders, copying settings. I use Firefox for my browsing needs and I have an uh, ad block on it as well and a couple of other extensions. DuckStation, now this is the latest build on the DuckStation website. Unfortunately, Stenzek, the developer, doesn't seem to be updating this anymore, which is unfortunately, again, that's just the nature of these developers, they do what they want. But honestly, a lot of the bugs have been fixed in this latest version, so it's, I'm happy with it. So that's the first page guys, those are the emulators I have. Now here again I have Citra MMJ, so I use this because this actually has a swap screen functionality, you can swap the screens, like one full screen, and then I can swap it to the bottom screen, and it's in full, full. I play, excuse me guys, I mainly play like, games like Tintin on this uh, emulator, but some other games work fine. Unfortunately, it doesn't have Vulkan support yet. Hopefully, the developer adds that. I have Red Dream for Dreamcast, but also, as I said, I use the Flycast one mainly. Files, video, okay. I don't use Chrome, guys. I use Simple Keyboard. I don't use the default Google Keyboard. <coughs> I prefer this one. It's much more simple. I have two Android games, Extreme Balancer 2 and 3, and I map them with the, the Retroid controlled, you know, mapping software. 
also have flashlight now this is a really cool app guys i want to make a full video on this this uh, app allows you to run flash games on your retroid or any android device and it comes with full controller support and it's it's not perfect but it's fantastic guys also have that on my other retroid devices and i have win later now i don't have much games on this now this allows you to run pc games back in the 2000s on the on these android devices i have one game on there but uh which i'll make a video on soon guys but yeah so this is the device guys i have no complaints look it feels very premium uh, compared to the other retro devices now uh, I've, uh, I've done a bit of light bleed here unfortunately because uh because there's some issues that happen when uh, i put the screen protector on but it's not a big deal honestly guys but yeah guys this device is it's very good I use this in conjunction with my other Retroid Pocket 2 Plus devices. I haven't left those behind. I still use them regularly because they do have some differences like the analog is on top with those devices and the D-pad is below. The D-pad is more domey, I mean uh, rubber membrane and it's a bigger one. This one's much smaller. But yeah guys, mainly I use this device for PS2, GameCube and uh, I use it for Winlater as well. And also some flash games, which is also very beneficial. I don't really use much PSP on here, but I should honestly in the future. If I go to the retro launcher, uh, I haven't really done much with this honestly because I'm not, I don't really use it honestly, guys. It doesn't really interest me. I have this. Uh, I use it on my retro two pluses, but not on this device because I don't see the use honestly, guys. I don't see the use. So yeah guys, that's this video, it's just a basic overview on the Retroid Pocket 2 S Indigo and this is the 4 gig version, not the 3 gig. I thought I might as well just go for it because you get more storage and an extra gig of RAM. But yeah guys, I've been using this regularly, not all the time, but I've been using it a decent amount. And uh, it's, what the heck, it still, it still works fine, honestly. If there was some problems, I would let you guys know, but there isn't. It's just the touchscreen is a bit finicky, but it's not completely off. And the performance, mostly, it's decent, honestly, guys. PS2 is fine. It's not perfect. It's not great. It's good enough. But I'd always recommend something more powerful if you want the full PS2 experience. So, yeah, guys, this is the Retroid Pocket 2 S. I don't know what else I can say. In this video, this is just a basic overview of my thoughts on it so far since I bought it a couple of months ago or half a year ago. So that's it guys. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.